Welcome to the All About You podcast. My name is Sheila and I am your host. In this podcast, I invite people to tell their stories of their travels, hobbies and passions. These podcasts are also now available on my All About You YouTube channel. So if you have a story to tell, please contact me on allaboutyoupodcast at yahoo.com and let's tell your story. Welcome to the All About You podcast and my guest today is Jennifer and we are going to be talking about EFT. Now EFT stands for the Emotional Freedom Technique. It may be something you've heard of, it may be something you're not familiar with, but we've got Jennifer with us today and she's going to guide us through what EFT is, how we can use it and actually how to do EFT. So Jennifer, welcome to the All About You podcast. Thank you so much, Sheila. It is such a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Let's get to it then. So Jennifer, EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, what is it to start with? So the simplest way to describe it is to say that it is like emotional acupuncture without the needles. And basically, EFT focuses on whatever is causing you distress. It could be a physical pain. It could be a memory of something that was disturbing. It could be a inconvenient belief or thought. And basically, what we it could be an emotion. And basically, what we do is we think about the thing and we apply gentle pressure or tap on the endpoints of acupressure or acupuncture meridians. So that's the real simple explanation. Now, the beauty of, of emotional freedom technique is anybody can do it. Yeah. It's very simple to learn. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to buy anything. You don't need any equipment. It's something you do on yourself. And it's incredibly simple, but it's incredibly powerful. Incredibly, okay. incredibly powerful. And I will say that it is an incredibly powerful technique that you can do for yourself. You can also work with practitioners. And one thing that a lot of us who've been doing it for a while have discovered is that there are certain things that it's easier to work with somebody who is not in the middle of it. And so that is the other thing about EFT is that it's very versatile in the sense that we can do a lot of things for ourselves to self-soothe, to deal with food cravings, to or any kind of cravings really, to deal with physical pain, to deal with anguish that we are just coping with. And if we come up against something that's really big, there is also the wonderful opportunity to work with people who've been studying this and training in this like I have for many years to sort of help us and support us through it. And so just wanted to mention that because that is something that I think a lot of people, especially if they first discovered EFT back in the days when it was really being promoted as like a DIY self-help tool, that sometimes we don't realize that it's it's great as a self-help tool and it's also an incredibly powerful modality when working with a practitioner. That's an extremely good and concise explanation of mm -hmm. EFT. So Jennifer, let's talk about how you actually do EFT on yourself. Let's talk about a typical routine with the typical um, I, I always sort of call it a text, but that's probably not a good a good explanation of it. Some so, people call it a script, actually. And that's it. it that's yes. And so, and the yeah. thing about the thing that's really interesting about the idea of the script is that a lot of times, what actually happens when people think they need to find a script is they get really stuck in the idea of what should I be saying, what kinds of words should I be using with EFT. And in my experience, the most powerful words are your own. And the most powerful words are talking about what's really going on for you. So um, I'm just thinking that to demonstrate or to show people how to work with EFT, sometimes the most effective thing to do is to choose an example of something that you are conscious of. So 
how would it, do we have time for me to run through some tapping with you? Absolutely, we Wonderful. do. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first just explain what's called the basic recipe and the listeners can also join in with us because this is a way that you can get a really sort of in real time experience of how effective EFT can be. So basically the way that it works is as I was saying, you know, you kind of tune into yourself and figure out like what's going on. Are you feeling emotionally distressed? Are you feeling a physical sensation? Are you having a memory that's cropping up? Are you feeling worried about something? Or are you having a sort of negative thought going through your head that's saying you can't do that? And just noticing like what's really going on for you. And then what we do is we just evaluate that using what's called a SUDS, a Subjective Units of Distress Scale. And we just say, you know, on a scale of zero to 10, if zero was absolutely no feelings at all, and 10 was absolutely just through the roof, where would I fall in the scale of intensity with this? And, you know, it can vary. Like sometimes it really is a zero and sometimes it really is a 10. And different people really have sort of different levels. Like some people are always 10s, some people are always threes. But most of us tend to range somewhere between like, you know, a two and maybe a nine most of the time. So what we do is we evaluate that number just to get a sense of where we're starting with something. And then what we do is we think about how we would describe the feeling or the thought. So let's say we're going to, let's stick with talking about a physical sensation. Let's imagine somebody had a headache. So it would be, we would start to think about like, so is the headache dull? Is it sharp? Is it wrapping all the way around my head or is it just in the front of my forehead? And as we get that definition of how is that feeling, we start coming up with our own words. So let's just imagine that this is a dull headache that's at the front of my forehead and maybe it's the throbbing sensation. And what I like to do is sort of tune in and see if there's a few extra descriptors, like what color is it? And what I'll do, or and maybe if it had a feeling, what would it be? So I'll come up with sort of a set of words to describe my feeling. So even though, and then what I usually do is start by tapping on the side of the hand and it's using what's called the setup statement, which starts with even though. So even though I'm having this dull headache, this dull throbbing headache that's at the front of my head and it's kind of grayish blue and feels really sad, I'm just tapping on it. And then what we do is we use what's called the balance statement and this balance statement used to traditionally be, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. But the thing about this is that some people can say that and really believe it. There are a lot of people who like that just really trips the BS detector for them and basically has them kind of going, I don't deeply and completely love and accept myself. So what I found is that it can be really helpful to find a balance statement that works for you. So maybe it could be something like I'm open to the possibility that this can shift or I'm just acknowledging it right now or maybe I can love myself through this. But what we want to do is find something that is going to allow us to have buy-in about what we're saying. So if I deeply and completely love and accept myself works for you, that's great. But if you're like a lot of the people that I've worked with over the years, usually we need to start with something a little bit more neutral than that. And so with that setup, with, which has the two parts, the beginning, which is the, even though I have this problem, and then the second part is the balance statement of, I'm willing for it to change. So some people are not necessarily comfortable saying I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And the problem with saying it, if you don't, is that that actually is going to cause more damage than than saying something that's a little bit harsher than that or that is that is more neutral than that. Because when we make affirmations that are that are in contrast to what we actually believe, what, cre what we do is we cause cognitive dissonance. We cause the part of us that's like, I'd like to believe this, but then the other part of us that's sort of inside that's kind of going, that is just total BS. And so if we are trying to say things that we don't agree with, we'll actually, it will actually create more friction. And the idea of this setup statement is not to create friction, but actually to sort of 
open the way so that we can do this work where we're saying, even though I have this problem, a balanced statement that can be something to sort of allow it to be okay anyway. So I really like to use balanced statements like, I'm open to the possibility that this can shift, or I maybe I can love myself anyway, or it is what it is, or I'm just acknowledging it. And as we do that, then we can sort of create more of a sense of like, okay, I'm just tapping on this. So we do the setup statement, which has the, even though I have this problem, and then the balance statement of, I'm open to the possibility that this can shift or something that works for you. And we do that three times. And I like to change my hands back and forth so that I can keep track of how many times I've done the setup statement. And so after that third time of, I'm open to the possibility that this can shift, the re using the reminder phrase, which would be just a short, simple phrase that is we repeat on every single EFT point that would be describing the problem. So as we were talking about it being a headache, it would be starting, and I like some people start in the eyebrows, some people start at the top of the head. I like to start at the top of the head, so I think of it as sort of a cascading shower going down. So starting by tapping on the crown chakra, if you're into yoga and spirituality, or just, you know, the fontanelle, the soft spot in a, on a baby's head, but just that top part of our head, we start by tapping on it and we basically say, this dull, aching headache in my forehead. And then we move to the eyebrows, this dull, aching headache. Eye to the eyes, this dull, aching headache. Under the eyes, this dull, aching headache. Under the nose, this dull, aching headache. Under the lip, this dull, aching headache collarbone this dull aching headache and then the final point is under the arms this dull aching headache and then coming back to the top of the head and taking a deep breath and so that is what's called the basic recipe of EFT so it's got basically it's got sort of three parts first part is to evaluate and assess what's going on and to determine the level of intensity on a, on, a, on a scale of zero to 10, or maybe you could determine it on, you know, percentages, or if you are not really a number person, like maybe like on a scale, or if you are thinking of like from white to black, like what, where in the, in the degree of, is it pure, you know, is it like no color, total absence of color or total color? or even thinking about the size or the magnitude of it. But in general, for most adults, just sort of thinking in terms of zero to 10 is fairly easy for us. So that's the first step is the identifying it and, and, and sort of assessing it with the SUDS. Then we do the setup statements, the three times, state the problem and then make the alternative, sort of offer ourselves the alternative or the balance statement of something more new, at least pause, neutral, if not positive, and then going through the points and just repeating only the problem, which is also known as the reminder phrase. And then at the, we come to the end of a round, we take a deep breath and evaluate and assess, like what differences have we noticed? What feels, what has shifted for us? And then from there, we might sort of take that and adapt the words to work for us. So for example, going with this idea of it being a headache. So say we just tapped on this round and where it had been sort of this dull throbbing headache in the top, in the front of your head, all of a sudden you're noticing that there's a band of tension that's kind of moved up to your forehead, moved up sort of above your forehead, now sort of more in the crown of your head. And maybe instead of it being this dull aching sensation, it feels more like a squeezing pressure. So you notice the shifts and then change the words to adapt to the shift. So even though this headache now feels like a dull pressure on the top of my head, you know, I'm open to the possibility that this can shift. And so we go through all of those rounds. We go through that setup statement three times total. And then again, we go through the top, through all of the points, starting again at the top of the head with this dull pressure in the top of my head. We continue through all of the points. And just to remind, because I sort of talked it through, but I'll, I'll describe all the points. So in EFT, 
the first point is the setup statement point, which is on the side of the hand. It used to be known as the karate chop point, but there, the because that is sort of a limited def definition, and we all have side of the hands, we shifted to just make it more of a descriptive. So we start by tapping on the side of the hand. So if you traced down from your baby finger or your pinky pinky finger, follow it all the way past the joint, and then sort of the the fleshy part on the side of your hand. And I like to use the three fingers from my other hand to tap. These are the points that we touch as we do or tap on as we do the setup statement. And then the next point is the top of the head, which as I mentioned is sort of the crown chakra or the soft spot on a baby's head, the fontanelle. And then there's the eyebrow points, which is at the top of your eye socket kind of right at the bridge of your nose, right where your eyebrows begin, unless you're like Frida Kahlo and you have a unibrow. These are the points like right on the, at the very tip or the start of your eyebrows. And then the side of the eyes is right on the temples between the sort of at the juncture between the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid, but not in your eye. So not on your eyelid, but the side. The next one is under the eye, and this is directly parallel to your pupils, and it is right on the eye socket again, sort of right on the ridge bone under your eye. The next one is under your nose, and it is between your lip and your nose. It's on the part of your body that some people call the cupid's bow. It's also known as the philtrum. So it's that sort of little groove right between your nose and your lip. So we tap there. And then the next point is between the lip and the chin. It's called the chin point, and that's in the groove between the lip and the chin. And then we move down from our face to our collarbones. And this is about, we sort of feel where your collarbones are, move over about, you know, sort of down about an inch and over about an inch and you'll find these spots that almost can feel sort of sore and we tap on those those are known as the collarbone points or some people we call them the sore spot and then under the arm following your armpit or going down your arm sort of just past the breast tissue if you are a female following down and sort of directly parallel to your nipple and your armpit we tap on the rib cage, and that's the underarm point, and then back to the top of the head. And so those are the basic points from EFT. So did that make sense? Do you have any questions about that? Jennifer, that makes total sense. There's a couple of points I'm, I'm going to bring up. Number one is I will include a chart with the podcast of these points. Fantastic. So yes, and I've got a beautiful it. chart for you. I think the really interesting thing I learned about EFT many, many years ago, thing was this statement, you know, I love and accept myself is generally the script you learn at the beginning. And absolutely, a lot of people, myself included, didn't feel particularly comfortable with that. But I think when you're starting out, you're, okay, th this is the script I've got, I must stick to the rules. But I think it's almost as if you have said, it's OK, write whatever you feel comfortable with, because if you're doing EFT, you're doing it for a reason. Yes. And you don't want to give yourself extra emotions or extra stress because you are not comfortable using any of these particular statements. And I think that is a very, very valid point. Make it yours. Make it yours. Make it yours. Thank you. I couldn't have said it better myself. And the thing is, so many people watch the tap along videos on YouTube or other places and see these people who just make it look so easy, but also so formulaic. And I think a lot of times people get caught up in this idea that they need to follow a set of rules, which we can tap on, even though I feel like I have to follow a set of rules and do this perfectly. I am open to the possibility that this can shift. What happens though, is that when we get so caught up in that idea that it has to be the perfect script, then a lot of times we might not even bother to tap 
because it doesn't feel fully, we can't find the right thing to say. And the beautiful thing is we get to meet ourselves where we are and tap where we are. And, you know, as a practitioner for EFT International and I'm actually a master trainer for EFT International, one of the biggest premises of our organization is that it's really about meeting ourselves and our clients and our students exactly where they are and honoring their process, not trying to impose some kind of an artificial agenda or script on them. And so it there's something so freeing when we get to use our own words. And I mean, there's nobody but you. If you swear like a sailor, like I often do, then you could absolutely swear like a sailor. You know, it has not been uncommon at times, especially when somebody is feeling really frustrated or angry with somebody to basically do the FU tapping. And that is just as good as anything with a bunch of flowery language. It, that's a valid point, isn't it? You know, I think maybe when you start off, OK, maybe start with the script. See how it feels. Yeah. Some people, they might be happy. Yeah, I'm going to follow the script. I'm happy. I love a rule. Da, da, da. Other people, I'm not so sure about this. Make it yours. But one thing I wanted to say, Jennifer, and first of all, I'm blown away that I have got somebody so well qualified doing the podcast it is it's an absolute dream. So thank you very much for that. The other thing I wanted to cover with you is my understanding these points we are actually tapping on are energy points and we yes. are sort of releasing stagnant energy. And that's often why we feel frustrated or we feel um worried about something because it's a build up of sort of stagnant energy is, is that right yes basically so you know every one of these points is connected to either a um, meridian point that's either the end point of an acupuncture meridian or is uh is just a point along a, one of the meridian lines the energy lines that are within our body and so you know in addition to having a nervous system and having a circulatory system with lymph and blood we also have an energy system in our body where energy courses and moves through our body kind of like thinking of a stream and when we experience intense emotions, when we experience traumatic events, when we experience things that sort of throw our energy system off, what can happen is we become, you know, that energy gets emotion, gets congested in our body. And I sort of think of it as like you could have physical congestion, mental congestion, emotional congestion, as well as energetic congestion. And tapping has a way of, I sort of think of it as almost like an ultrasonic cleaner or something, where by tapping on these meridians, what we are doing is we are freeing up the places where we've got the emotional, energetic, physical, mental, spiritual log jams that have been kind of getting blocked within our energy system. And by tapping and, and stimulating these acupuncture points, what we are able to do is create a free flow of energy again. And what's absolutely amazing is how much as human beings, if we do not release stress, we continue to carry it around in our body. And our society, is living in a time right now where we are not doing the things that our ancestors were able to do to release stress. You know, as a mammal, as a species, you know, what we do is that we are wired to deal with stress by turning on the part of our brain called the amygdala, which is the fight or flight mechanism. And basically what we do when we are in a state of distress is that alarm system goes off in our body and it triggers a response that should either be fight or flee. That's the natural response to it. But the thing is, you know, when we were, our ancestors were running away from like saber toothed tigers and woolly mammoths, when that was happening, we exerted an incredible amount of energy. And by the time we got out of harm's way, we then had worked out and worked off all of that adrenaline.
But now, a lot of the threats that we are experiencing are more metaphorical threat, um, threats, that they're more sort of in emotional threats, like you read a text message from an angry boss, or you happen to see a snippet of news on social media. And the thing is that we react to those things as at the same level of danger and threat as if it was a saber-toothed tiger, but we don't do anything to shake it off. And so as a society, we're getting into, we've gotten into this state of sort of perpetual triggering and distress without a lot of ways to reboot the system. And so the beautiful thing about EFT is that it's an incredibly gentle way for us to reboot our system. I think one thing that I have experienced in the past We've talked about doing the whole tapping routine with the setup statements, etc. But I've also used EFT, for example, when I've been in an office and I've taken a particularly frustrating or difficult phone call. I'm not in a position to go somewhere and spend five minutes doing the whole thing. And I have literally sat at my desk with the karate point and just basically massaged those two sides of my hands together and just sort of thinking you know whatever has happened in this phone call has upset me but I respect myself and da, da, whatever the statement was but that gentle massaging and just sort of thinking to yourself and nobody in in the office need know what you're doing and I, it's like a little sort of mini a mini routine of EFT mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. you can do sitting on your desk nobody needs to know they just need nobody to needs to know. your hands together it can give you that sort of on the spot relief of that tension that has built up and then maybe when you do have the opportunity to do the full um tapping routine then go for it but as an as soon as you put that phone down the emotions are running high just just sort of literally massage those two points together think about you know the, the statements or whatever you want to do and it's all like a, a mini sort of tension relief absolutely and you bring up a really good point which is that we do not have to follow the basic recipe all the time that you know sometimes if you were in a situation and you didn't even necessarily know what you wanted to be tapping on you know you don't have to start with a setup statement you can also just tap on the points as you and just talk to yourself or as you were saying you know sort of doing just the massaging of the side of the hand i also like another an alternate point is called the gamut point in acupuncture it's known as the triple warmer and it's the groove between the ring finger and the baby finger on the top of your hand and what i like to do is just put my three fingers from the other hand on that the top of my hand and just kind of give my hand a little hug to sort of squeeze it and hold it I have used this for more dental cleanings than I can even count at this point I actually even use this hopefully this is not TMI but I use this for a colonoscopy procedure without being put under with Versed I had a little you know they gave me a little bit of a sort of an um, anti-inflammatory, but um, I was completely wide awake through the entire procedure. And all I needed to do was hug this gamut point and I was able to breathe through it. I won't say it was painless, but it was manageable. It was completely manageable. So we can also, there are other points that we can also do that are more discreet. Let's just acknowledge something here too, before we go any further, which is that at first, EFT can seem really weird to most people. And, you know, I'm not going to try to convince you that tapping on the top of your head and all over your face and your torso is just completely normal. And why do you think it's weird? It is weird. It is weird. It is not something that people are used to doing. And when you first start learning it, it can feel really awkward. It can feel really strange. So having these hand points, especially when you're first getting used to it, can be a really wonderful alternative. So we can massage the side of our hand. We can massage the top of our hand and the gamut point. We can also squeeze around our nail beds so that we're sort of holding 
kind of just holding the tips of our fingers between our index finger and our thumb with our other hand and just sort of give that again kind of giving a little bit of a reboot there's also tapping on the sides of the nail beds but i kind of like the squeezing the nail beds because i find that a little bit easier to and more discreet and like you said you know we can also you can do something where if you wanted to be a little bit more obvious like you wanted to do a setup statement you can always sort of take your hands and put them underneath your desk and just sort of tap on the side of the hand and in your mind even though i can't believe when an absolute be that person was on the phone i'm okay and i love myself anyway so we can do that kind of stuff and then sometimes if it's just really intense we can always you know i think that it's it's it is worth thinking about those times when it's really intense of just taking a bathroom break and going into the bathroom for even a minute because i've actually been doing instagram reels lately i've been running through a tapping sequence and you can do a single tapping sequence with the setup and all the reminder points in one minute on instagram <laughs> so doesn't have to take a really long time to do a single round of EFT. I think that's absolutely brilliant, Jennifer, because you have given us real life situations when you have used this on yourself. And I yeah. think that's incredible, the treatment you had and, and you used EFT there. As you say, it's often at work we have these horrible phone calls, we have people are just having an off day, but you seem to be on the receiving end of it. And we want these little tricks that we've literally got in our toolkit that, as you say, put your hands underneath the desk, give them a bit of a massage, go off to the bathroom, just do a little one minute is, is absolutely brilliant. And it's these you've got the full EFT if you want to do that and you're in a position to be able to do that. If not, we've got some very little discreet things you can do. You may not get the full effect, but it's probably going to be enough to bring you from a 10 maybe down to a 7 and maybe do another one and hopefully bring you down to a 5 and just, you know, instead of saying something, you shouldn't say you're a bit calmer. Yes, exactly. And the thing that I love about EFT is that it allows us to go from reacting to responding that it takes us out of our fight or flight because what happens when we go into fight or flight is that we develop sort of tunnel vision. The access to our thinking brain, our frontal cortex, really gets diverted to our emotional brain and eventually even to our brain stem, the instinct, sort of the lizard brain of instinct. And when we are in that state of emotional reactivity, we do not, we can't think our way out of it. You know, that because the way that the brain works is that I, somebody once showed me this example and I really love it. If you hold your arm up and you've got your wrist up and you've got your hand open, if you sort of, the wrist part of your arm is basically your brain stem and your whole hand open, this sort of inner palm, this is what's called the limbic brain, which is the emotional, intuitive, subconscious brain. This is the part of us that reacts to things. This is the part of us that has an emotional response to things. And then our thumb sort of tucked inside of our brain, that would be what's called the amygdala, which is the almond-shaped organ or gland within our brain that is in charge of signaling our adrenals to produce cortisol and to engage in fight or flight. It's the part that basically says, you're in danger, you need to do something about it. Basically, the frontal cortex are four fingers which would curve over that thumb, and that is the part of our brain that's capable of thinking. But as soon as we go into the amygdala getting triggered, we essentially flip our lid and when we flipped our lid we no longer have access to our thinking brain what we have access to is our emotional brain and our instinctive reflex brain the part of us that's in charge of breathing and our heartbeat and if we came up to a stove and we tried to touch it we'd instinctively just pull our hand away these parts of us do not think and so one of the big challenges that i think has been going on for 
you know, since psychotherapy started is this idea that we can think our way out of trauma, that we can think our way out of distress, that we can somehow just sort of tell ourselves something and it's going to be okay. And while anchoring statements like it's okay, breathe, you're, you're okay, it's okay to relax now, those things can be really, really helpful. A lot of times, if we are in a state of distress, we can't necessarily just say, oh, it's all in your head because it's really not necessarily in the front of our brain, it's in our emotional brain and in our body. And so the beauty of tapping is that it allows us to address the stress on a level that it actually reaches and really works directly with the amygdala so that we can reset our fight or flight and not continuously be in the state of perpetual fight flight or and eventually freeze eft is so simple so practical no equipment doesn't cost anything you can do it anywhere depending on whether you want to do the full thing or whether you just want a sort of a mini session and it is just incredible i cannot believe everybody doesn't know about this i know i know i mean i literally changed my entire life because of eft and it was such a miraculous thing for me my story is that i was in a very serious car accident when i was 18 years old and i had been struggling with ptsd for my entire adult life after that i was yeah i was in my early 40s when i first discovered eft when I first discovered it, I found it really weird. I found it really inaccessible because at the time, the recipe was much more complicated than what I taught you. Um, it involved a lot more hand points. It involved a lot more like eye movements. It involved all kinds of stuff. And so I found it really inaccessible, but I kept on hearing about it. And a few years after I first discovered it, Gary Craig, who was the original founder of EFT, revised the recipe and made it simpler and created what's now known as the basic recipe that I, I taught you you guys earlier. And when I found that, I really was able to buy into it more. But what really did the trick for me was my husband and I were driving home in an ice storm and having had a history of car accidents, I was very easily activated and triggered and distressed. And we were driving in about two inches of sheer ice and sleet. And I was really anxious. And so I asked him if he minded if I just did some tapping. And within three rounds of tapping, I went from a 10 of real terror and real distress down to a zero of yeah, I guess we could be in a car accident. Yeah, we might die. Oh, well. And it wasn't that I wasn't recognizing the gravity of the situation, but I was just so completely calm. And so where I had been at a 10 of emotional distress was something that I'd been carrying around for quite a while. I was zeroed out with very few rounds of tapping. And that was the moment when I went, oh, my God, I need to learn how to do this. And I need to learn like I, that was just, I was just absolutely blown away. And so I started sharing it with my clients at that point in time. I wasn't an EFT practitioner, but I was working as a healer. So I started just sharing it like, hey, can I teach you this thing I just learned? And I had this one woman who had been through a very difficult birth experience with her only son. And she and he both had nearly died. And it was a very, it had been very, very, very difficult. And so we just did a little bit of tapping on it. And within maybe half an hour, what had been a, I will never, ever, ever be able to have children again, suddenly became a, yeah, maybe I could have babies again. And it was life changing for this woman. And that was when I went, oh my God, I need to learn how to do this. I need to learn how to teach this. I need to share this. I want to shout this from the rooftops. And so over the course of four years, I basically leveraged my way out of a thriving brick and mortar business over to becoming an EFT first practitioner and then trainer because 
I love this tool so much and I believe so strongly in it because it is a tool that we can use for ourselves. It is a tool we can use absolutely anywhere. It is a tool that doesn't require any special equipment, except if you want to do it with somebody and you need to have a computer so that you have Skype or Zoom. But it doesn't require anything other than ourselves. And even, you know, if somebody was missing, for example, like you, you didn't have both hands or something, you can still just tap with one hand or and imagine tapping on places as well. It's an incredibly versatile tool. I, I think that's the beauty of it, Jennifer, isn't it? It is incredibly simple to learn. Yes. You don't need any financial outlay, no equipment, no clothing. You don't need to go anywhere. And it is incredibly powerful. And I think, if anything, be aware of how powerful it is because absolutely you can go from, I'm a 10, and all of a sudden you're down to about a three. Yeah. The shoulders have come down, the blood pressure's come down. Oh my God, I feel so much better now incredibly powerful and one of the things you were talking about those anticipating something where we're feeling anxious about it and there is you know there is something to be said for car tapping where you know you are just sitting in the car getting ready to go into the party or go into the interview or go someplace and just you know one round of tapping even though i'm really anxious about seeing these people again i love and accept myself that we can use tapping for any situation where we're experiencing distress and you know one round of tapping may help take the edge off. Sometimes you might need more than one round of tapping to really take the edge off, but it is just amazing what it can be used for. Gary Craig used to say, try it on everything. And I will just say that while there have been certainly, like I haven't been able to set a bone with EFT, <laughs> There have been I there have been I have yet to meet a circumstance or situation where there wasn't some way that EFT could be applicable and useful. And that's one of the things that I absolutely love about it. The one thing that I learned many, many years ago about when we it the only time when EFT is sort of contraindicated is in a situation where somebody is going to need to report a, a story accurately in court. And so if somebody was, because EFT is so powerful and effective, it changes our relationship to our memory. And a lot of times where somebody experiences something really intense, their memory of it is very vivid and very bright and very like they can replay and relive the entire scenario in their mind. And what happens when people tap on a memory is a lot of times it becomes kind of like a very faded photograph or kind of just sort of like vaporizes. And so when it comes to using EFT for something where if somebody was going to have to testify in court, it is not suggested that you tap down the intensity on an event like that until you've had a chance to actually tell the story. Because going to court after you've tapped on it you might not actually even be able to recall or re you know and certainly you'd be telling the story without the emotional presentation that would certainly make a jury listen to you and and probably lean in your favor because the tapping would have calmed that down so you know that's the thing about EFT is that it is just that powerful the conversation has been absolutely fantastic. I am so impressed that we have got somebody with such amazing credentials. I mean, we've gone right to the top on this one. So thank you so much. Oh, it is such a pleasure. It is such an incredible honor. I absolutely love EFT and I'm so glad you found me. And just, you know, the universe conspired to put us together. I'm very much a believer in the stars aligning. And if anybody listen to this podcast before they know I believe in that so Jennifer we're going to put the link to your website we're going to put the link to your Instagram any final words before we finish any final words of wisdom mm. I think that the most important thing about this is use your own words make it your own make it your own make, make it, it your, your own that you know there's and that it's like 
if you're confused, if you have some questions, please, you know, come on over to my website. I've got some free guides for people to learn about EFT. I'm actually, um, as of the recording of this, I'm actually just about to do another level one training. It's going to be a two day training in August um, and sort of set in. I mean, I'm on Eastern time. You know, if you really love this, I would actually, one more resource that I want to offer is the EFT International website, because there are practitioners and trainers all over the planet who are, who love this tool as much as Sheila and I do, and where if you feel called to learn more, fortunately, there are a lot of resources available. There are a lot of studies about it. Oh, that's the other thing I'd love to mention is just that EFT has been used in many, many studies now, and more and more they are finding it to be one of the most effective tools for PTSD with veterans and other people who've really been through the ringer. So especially right now in the midst of everything that's going on, the war in Ukraine, all of the distress and trauma we've all experienced as a result of the pandemic, EFT is a tool that is is so perfect for all of us to work through the distress because then as we release the distress, as we release the tension and fear and worry that we carry around in our body, as all of this gets to be let go of, the miracles that can happen because it allows us to see the world with multiple possibilities as opposed to in that place of reactivity and tunnel vision. I mean, this may be kind of a bold statement, but I really think that EFT is one of the things that is going to save the world, that it really is a tool. I have in the over 30 years that I've been working as an energy healer, an intuitive, a psychic, and just sort of around the block with this, that I've been on this path. I'm way over 30 years actually at this point in time, I have never ever found a modality that is more effective, that is more elegant, that is more efficient, that is more gentle, and that, and that creates more sustainable, lasting, permanent results than EFT. So I love it. I hope you can tell that I love it. And I'm so glad you love it and that you were really, you know, that, and that we found our way to each other to have this conversation. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for taking us through the world of EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. Jennifer, thank you so much. Oh, you are so welcome. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Please subscribe on whatever platform you are using. It is free. And if you would like to tell your story, please contact me on all about you podcast at yahoo.com and let's tell your story.